we'll be watching later on. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come because we have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. We thank you, Lord, for all your saints right now, those who are in need of healing, those who are in need of deliverance, those who are fearful, those who are feeling hopeless in their spirit, those who are broken in their spirit. Father, we thank you that your sacrifice has atoned for us completely, has done everything for us, for you have paid the price. We thank you and we come under the covenant of the blood right now. And we declare, Lord, that we are free. We declare that we are whole. We declare that we are healed. We declare that we have uh, life uh, and life in abundance. We thank you that you have written our names in the book of life. We give you all praise, all worship, and all honor. And if you believe, write amen in the chat and let's celebrate the greatest atonement ever once and for all. Amen, amen, amen. We are so excited to celebrate. Tonight is a huge, huge celebration. And I guess for us as believers, we are meant to be celebrating what Jesus has done. And as Nina was praying, I heard the Holy Spirit say that tonight is going to be a night of deliverance. Tonight is going to be a night of freedom. Tonight is going to be a night where I, I saw migraines break off of people. I saw Jesus healing and touching homes tonight. I saw oppression in the name of Jesus just leave people's bodies. Fear leave because let me tell you something that when we speak about the blood of Jesus demons flee when we celebrate and I am just so thankful because tonight we're not just celebrating prosperity we're not celebrating any gift we are celebrating the blood of Jesus the blood that is eternal the blood that cries out and says that I am more righteous than the blood of Abel so I just just want you to receive because so many people you're getting healed in your bodies right now as we are decreeing the blood so as we are preaching this message yes, as you are writing your notes down i want you to say i plead the blood of jesus right now as a protection i plead i stand righteous i stand forgiven in the name of jesus yes. i want you to say i appropriate what Jesus has done tonight. I want you to say, I stand on the finished work of the cross tonight in the name of Jesus. There is no more compromise. We are positioning ourselves right now, pleading the blood of Jesus. And all of God's people said, Amen, amen, amen. and amen, amen, amen. Well, let me tell you something. Since last night and today, the Jewish people all around the world, they celebrate the holiest day of the entire year in God's sacred calendar. So they are celebrating when their priest the holy, went into the Holy of Holies once to offer blood sacrifices so that people's sins would be covered or atoned for. How much more should we be dancing tonight? Mm. How much more shall we be celebrating tonight? Because we have a high priest who offered himself as an eternal offering for you, for me, for everyone who is in this world. So I want you to be so filled with joy. Whatever is coming on your mind, whatever is distracting you, whatever, I just want want you to come and just lay it at the foot of the cross right now because this is the time of celebration yes. tonight is a night where we celebrate king jesus we celebrate what he has done and we come and say thank you thank you thank you thank you because of what you have done because of what you have 
paid. We can all be gathering tonight and decreeing and declaring that we have a position in heaven. We can be assured that our sins have been forgiven. Mm. So tonight is a celebration. I want you to say, I am celebrating tonight. We are celebrating tonight. Yeah. So in that, I want to do some teaching so we know, because maybe you're thinking, Yvonne, you're always excited and we don't know why you're always excited. Well, let me help you understand why I am so excited. So in the Old Testament, what used to happen, I want you to write this down, Leviticus 17 and verses 11. The Bible says that for the life of the flesh is in the blood. So any blood that you see actually carries life. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood. Someone say that it is the blood which makes atonement. So the blood of of animals in the Old Testament made atonement. Now, the thing is, what is the day of atonement? You might be thinking, what is the day of atonement? Well, the day of atonement comes 10 days after Rosh Hashanah, which is the Jewish New Year. And the Lord said to them that 10 days after this, I want you to celebrate the day of atonement. So the word Yom uh, Yom Kippur. Yom means day. Kippur means covering. So what does atonement mean in the Old Testament? I want you to write it down because it's going to help you. It is the day the Lord covered the sins of his people through a blood sacrifice. So that is what it was. Mm. And thousands upon thousands upon thousands of animals would have been sacrificed every single year. On this day, the high priest would offer blood sacrifices for himself and for the people on this day. The biggest problem is that and this is when it's going to get really exciting, is that the word atonement in the Old Testament means covering up. In other words, your sins were never forgiven. It was just a covering. It's almost like you could still see it, but it's covered, but it's there. And so there was no, per it was, there was no permanent solution. In actual fact, let me tell you something. What used to happen on this day used to remind the people of one thing. It used to remind the people that they were sinners. Mm. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verses 3 to 4, it says, but in those sacrifices, there was a reminder of sins. So just in case you forgot, you would be reminded the following year that you're a sinner. Mm. And then your sins are covered and then you would come again and then you would be reminded that you are a sinner. And who knows that so many people, even though Jesus forgave our sins, they still live under the old covering or the old covenant today. And let me tell you how they think. This is how they speak. They will tell you, I am a sinner saved by grace. That's true. But let me propose to you a different proposal. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> because Jesus became sin for me. He, he who knew no sin became a sin so that I could be in right positioning with authorities. Yes, Lord. I am in right Thank positioning you, with the heavenly king. Yeah. So, so many of us, although this happened, we still think until today we are sinners because we are constantly looking at what we fail to do. Mm. We are constantly thinking, I failed God. I missed the mark. I haven't been, I haven't been doing enough. I'm 
here to remind you today that you are no longer under the old covenant. In the old covenant, sin used to be covered. Sin separated us from God and brought sickness and disease, demons and eternal punishment. But here it comes so exciting. The word atonement in the New Testament has a completely different meaning. The word atonement means, I want you to write it down, it is broken into three syllabuses. Someone say three syllabuses. Okay, at, A-T, one, the next one is O-N-E, and then meant, at one meant. In other words, one with him. Atonement means in the new covenant that you have become one because King Jesus reconciled you with his father and presented you as a perfect sacrifice. You are perfect in the father's sight. In actual fact, when the father looks at you, he sees Jesus because you and Jesus you, are one. Thank you, Lord. And so the word atonement in the new covenant means permanent removal of sin. In other words, there is nothing wrong with you. Your sin, Jesus paid the full price. Hear me in the spirit of everything you have done everything anyone will do the price has been already paid so atonement in the new covenant means that there is no longer a sin because it has already been paid for and some of you you're allowing the devil to torment you you're allowing the enemy to make you believe that you are not good enough, that God is not pleased with you, that there's always something wrong with you. I am here to decree and to declare to you tonight, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Thank you. This is why I want you to celebrate. Yes, you can be healed. Yes, you can be delivered because Jesus on the cross said it is finished so you need to live out of the finished work of the cross you need to appropriate what jesus has done so the first thing we need to understand is in hebrews 9 verses 26 it says but now but once now. at the end of the ages hallelujah he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. So he has appeared not to cover sin, mm. not to hide sin, but to banish it. It is no longer there. And so we need to live every single day knowing and believing that Jesus, you are righteous that God does not see your sin. It is no longer there. In actual fact, when John the Baptist saw Jesus, he said this, he said, this is the Lamb of God who does what? Takes away. Who covers our sin. No. <laughs> who hides our sin. No, this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. So the first thing we need to do to understand is that I want you to put your hand on your heart and say, I am righteous because of what Jesus has done. Yes, Lord. I want you to say the blood of Jesus cleanses me from all my sins. I am blessed. I am blessed to prosper. I am blessed to multiply because the blood of Jesus covers me right now. The Lord, I, I heard God say to me that there's someone on the Zoom and you've been having heart issues. And when you touched your heart and declared that, the Lord said, I healed you tonight. Hallelujah. So I want you to test yourself and let us know because it's happened. This had to be done once. In the old covenant, 
every single year it had to be done over and over and over again and so you're in suspense because you just don't know have i been forgiven have i not been forgiven but the bible tells us in the book of hebrews chapter 7 verses 27 that he did this once for all when he offered himself mm. what did he the word offering is what jesus did on the cross he is the high priest and he is the perfect sacrifice he is the eternal high priest he is the eternal offering he went into the holy of holies and offered himself remember what i said at the start life is in the blood in other words when you decree and declare that you have received the blood of jesus by faith then the life of jesus comes on the inside of you and you need to understand that the life is what we are all wanting tonight if i take you back to the garden when adam ate from the tree of good uh, of, of good and uh, um, of evil what happened was adam and eve they were banished from what from the tree of life the tree of life god was in this place and no one could enter because god did not want them to live forever with this condition but when your high priest came when your eternal king came he did not offer any sacrifice he did not bring another bull or another goat he offered his life Thanks. through his blood so tonight when you decree that when you declare that you need to understand that you have access to abundant life through the blood of jesus that is what was said in john 10 10 that the enemy comes to kill and to steal and to destroy right. but i have come to give you life and how do you receive life his life comes through his blood because Leviticus 17 11 says life is in the blood and this is what differentiates us from any other faith group everyone else is a philosophy but I'm here to declare to you that Muhammad did not offer his blood he is dead and his bones are rotting in his grave so is buddha so is everyone else but king jesus who lives forever in the yeah. heavenly tabernacle he has entered heaven once and for all i'm here to tell you my friend you can enter heaven you can see king jesus you can be healed you can be saved you can be delivered because you have received the blood of jesus the life is in the blood i think this is very good news i don't know but i'm looking at your faces and some of you are thinking what is this crazy woman why is she so on fire for jesus let me tell you one thing i, I want you to put your cameras on guys there's like uh, 70 plus here and i want you to put your cameras on because we, we want to if if one is going to preach even better i can i can promise you that now but 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 you have to get this in your spirit because this is going to set you up for the whole year this is going to set you up for the next phase next challenge why do so many believers give up on their calling why do they give up on their promises why are, are they not fighting the good fight because of lack of understanding my people perish because of lack of understanding and the the lack of understanding what is the eternal and i i mean to say what i say eternal living because jesus as yvonne said is alive his sacrifice is a living sacrifice that's what makes the difference is jesus dead or alive you can you can write in the chat but i'm sure if you're on this discipleship class I can I can bet that you you would know the answer. Is Jesus dead or alive? Is his alive. sacrifice dead or alive? And that's why we have eternal atonement. 
and it's not a cover-up. Say there's no more cover-ups. We're, we're about to have communion and we're going to come clean, guys. We're going to repent before God. Some people will say, oh, my God, the, those people on YouTube, they're probably thinking repentance. When was the last time I heard the word repentance? But let me tell you, it's going to be different because repentance means we're changing our thought patterns, our actions, our heart attitude, the way we conduct and live our lives as believers, as believers who are filled in the Holy Spirit. And why did we say we want to celebrate tonight? Because the benefits of the eternal living sacrifice of Jesus is a complete atonement of every guilt, every shame, every brokenness, every defeat of the enemy. I don't know what you went through or going through right now, but this is very good news. You should be getting up of your seat or your bed or your kitchen, whatever, and jumping up and dancing and shouting that, yes, Jesus is alive. He sacrificed. Yes. Come on, let's do it. Because you know what? This is the difference. This is, this is the deal. That, but now it's no longer that we have to go and wait for a high priest because our high priest went through the veil. He tore down the veil. You know, let me, let me tell you something. According to the Jewish tradition, since the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, there hasn't, there wasn't. For 40 years until the destruction of the temple, there was not an accepted atonement thereafter for 40 years, almost. Because the eternal word, Jesus himself came and offered himself a sacrifice on the altar. That was the cross. And it was accepted by God the Father as an eternal done deal. Say the deal has been done it's sealed it's finished it's complete and this gives us the driver this gives us the truth because when we know the truth Hallelujah. the truth sets us free what does that mean it doesn't mean that your addiction will just fall away it means that the shackles on our minds the chains that are holding us back the misunderstanding or disbelief that we have is gone why because Jesus, the living sacrifice, has finished Hallelujah. our atonement. He has finished our redemption. He has finished our salvation. And so we want to walk in that tonight. And as Yvonne continues on, we want to get ready. We want to get ready for communion. And for those who are uh, on YouTube Live, I encourage you to go and get a piece of bread and some grape juice or some wine, whatever is good for you, because we're going to have communion together to celebrate the living and the greatest atonement that Jesus has done for us. Amen. Amen. Thank amen. You, amen. Thank you, thank you. Um, we need to remember that the atonement is not done once every year. It's eternal. So when we say eternal, you're thinking, okay, where did you get that, Yvonne? Let me tell you. Hebrews 9, 13 to 14. I want to read you those words because they're so beautiful. It says, under the old system, the blood of goats and bulls and ashes of a heifer could cleanse people's bodies from ceremonial impurities. Just think how much more Will the blood of Jesus purify your conscience from sinful deeds so that we can worship the living God? So he's making a comparison and he's thinking, let's think about this. If the blood of goats and bulls can cover sin for one year, I want you to think with me. I want you to use your common sense. How much more, hallelujah, is the blood of Jesus? We're not talking about any blood. We're not talking from anyone. We are talking about the blood of God's only son. How much more can this blood bring healing, deliverance, forgiveness? And then he throw 
goes in a bomb. Someone say a bomb. He says this, for by the power of the eternal spirit, yes. Christ offered yes. himself, Thank hallelujah, you. as a perfect sacrifice. I want you to hear this in the spirit. For by the power of the eternal spirit, he, Christ offered himself as a perfect sacrifice. In other words, when I say eternal, eternal means it transcends time. Yes. It transcends time. It says on the cross, Jesus took upon himself the sins. Anything of, of I, whatever I have done, whatever sins you have done, whatever sins anyone who is unborn has done, whatever sins anyone who passed away has done, am I getting this? Hallelujah. The blood that was offered for me is eternal. It has no expiration date. It has, it's just eternal. In other words, I need to understand that. That is why the Apostle Paul was so excited. In 1 Corinthians, he is, and chapter 2, verses 1, he tells the Corinthian people, I, when I came to you, I did not come with excellence of speech or wisdom. You get to see many messages in churches today and they're motivational. They just want to give you a tickle. They just want to give you a good feeling. But he says, I refuse to do that. I only have one message. I determined to know nothing. Someone say to know nothing. I am not interested in any human wisdom, but except Christ and him crucified because it is through the power Power of the cross it is through what happened on the cross we need to preach the cross of christ again we need to speak about the blood of christ again yes. we cannot just receive messages that tickle us we want the real deal because let me tell you that when you come to jesus it is the message of death and rebirth every other um, philosophy in the world will get you to work on yourself. For example, if you have anger and you go and you um, to a psychologist, and I'm not against psychologists, but I'm talking about worldly wisdom, they will get you to work on the old man and they will tell you, manage your anger. Well, I'm here tonight to tell you, I'm not managing my anger. My anger is going to get crucified on the cross. I'm not managing my depression. I'm not managing my cancer. I'm here to tell you that the message of the cross is a message of death and rebirth. It is a message where you die to self. It is a message where the Apostle Paul says that I died with Christ. I hung on the cross with him. And so I no longer live, but he lives in me. The power of his spirit, the power of his blood runs in my veins. I have my hard days. I have my struggles. I go through circumstances, but I'm still alive. I'm still preaching the message of the cross. I'm still smiling because it's not by your ability. It is not by your strength. I am here to tell you that some of you, the enemy wanted to take you out completely. That's right. But because you stood on the power of the cross, because you bleeded the blood of Jesus, you are here. You are still standing because the life of Jesus penetrated your veins. It penetrated your life. And so people around you think you should have been dead a long time ago. And you're like, absolutely, but you don't understand. I have a blood and it's eternal. It has perfected me forever. I have become one with the perfect sacrifice of heaven. And so when the father sees me, the father falls in love with me because I've united to his beloved. I've united to what's so precious to him. The father loves the son, Jesus said. The father loves the son. And when you fall in love with the son tonight, when you worship the son tonight, the father falls in love with you yeah. because you and the father become one. One in glory, one in honor, one in power, one in healing, one in everything. There is no separation. The apostles, Paul said, I've gone through so much. 
but I'm here to tell you what can separate me from the love of Christ. No demons, no angels, no sword, nothing. Because I've become one with him. How can you separate two that become one? And they got united through the eternal spirit. You are bonded with him tonight. I want to speak to your identity tonight. Yeah. I want to speak to who you are tonight. So I'm going to give you some quick points and we want to pray and have communion together. And I won't be able to give you all the verses because we're running out of time. But very quickly, what are the benefits of the atonement? The first benefit of the atonement is that your sins have been forgiven. Ephesians 1, 7, it says in him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins Thank according you, to the riches of his grace. Doesn't those words sound so sweet? Mm -hmm. Don't you just love listening to those verses? Um, the next one is you can receive healing to your body because first peter chapter 2 verses 24 it says that he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we uh, uh, that we have died to sins might live for righteousness by his stripes you are healed so i want you to receive that in your body you received righteousness. I'm here to tell you and to propose to you that the word righteousness is not a word to do with religion. It comes from law. What is it? It comes from the discipline of law. The word righteousness means, you can write it down, to be in right standing with authority, to be in alignment, to have correct fellowship with authority to be in a legal or lawful alignment. Thank so you. we are in right standing with God through his atonement. There is no more eternal punishment, Thank but you. eternal life. You know that the minute you leave this planet, you are in the arms of Jesus. You have this hope that is rooted on the inside of you. Rather than the curse you have received a blessing in christ you have received every heavenly blessing ephesians 1 3 there is no more poverty he breaks the curse of poverty over your life second corinthians said for you know the grace of our lord jesus christ he became poor so that you through his poverty might become rich so he broke the curse of lack and poverty. In the atonement, you received acceptance rather than rejection. Ephesians 1.5, because he made you accepted in the beloved. And the last one is that you have become a new creation, a creation which never walked this earth ever before. Each one of you is you and Jesus, and we all look different, but we all look the same because of our union with Jesus. Second Corinthians 5, 17, that when you receive him, you become a new creation. And the list goes on and on and on. And so as Mina begins to minister and as we have communion, I want you to come and say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I am not going to be familiar with your blood. I am not going to be familiar with your cross. Tonight, it's going to be like the first time I have heard that. I want you to remember when you first got saved and how excited you were mm. to know that your sins were forgiven. I lost my mind. I really did. <laughs> and tonight, I want God to do the same again. A sense of joy, peace, excitement. Lord, you've done this for me? Yes, I did this for you. Yeah. You know, today I was uh, having a chat with a Jewish uh, friend. He said, you know, we've been fasting for, I think he said, over a day to celebrate this day. And I am believing because I have given to the Lord, I have sacrificed and I've repented that he 
You know, they believe that today God will decide who is written in the book of life and who is not. I just want to give you, why am I sharing this with you? Because if you are a believer in Jesus, his sacrifice, guess what? Guess what? Your name has been written in the book of life. If you don't believe me, go to Revelation 13 or Revelation 18. Those who are the, the angels, when he opened the book, he saw those people whose names were written in the book of life. What is the qualification? What qualifies you? Faith in Jesus. Faith in his sacrifice. Faith. And, and how simple is it? Because if we were still under the old covenant, we would be coming to do the same thing over and over and over. But before we have communion, as Yvonne was preaching, I am, and I looked it up because I feel it's not about the physical aspect so much, but many believers have what's called a guilt conscience. Mm. A guilt or a guilty conscience. Mm. And guilty conscience is in your soul. It's in the emotions. It's in the will. It's in the thought patterns that we think of ourselves. And if I'm going off track here, please write me in the chat. But this is what I feel in my spirit. So I looked up the passage because I remembered this beautiful verse in the book of Hebrew. By the way, Hebrew are the people who have crossed over. You have crossed over. So let's celebrate. Don't let anything from the past hold you back. Don't let anything. I love what people are writing in the chat that they were delivered instantly, that Jesus healed them, that they, when they received him, something happened. Because the truth is that you have become a new creation, born again in his image and the old has passed away. But why do we have a guilty conscience? It is because our soul hasn't been renewed. Yeah. It is because our soul needs that renewal every single day, every single minute. But let me tell you the good news. Because of the eternal living sacrifice of Jesus, this is afforded to you. This is available to you. But let me read this out of Hebrews 10, verse 22. <laughs> Paul writes, or the Hebrew writer, he says, Let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him. What are we trusting him? Why? How can we trust him fully? For our guilty consciences have been sprinkled. And, and the writer of the Hebrews of Paul writes, and he's reminded of the day of atonement because the high priest would go in and take of the sacrifice of the, of the goat and sprinkle the mercy seat with the blood. And you know that without the sacrifice, without the blood, nothing can be cleansed. And it says this, for our guilty consciences have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean. You, you see the correlation? He is talking about a guilty conscience being sprinkled by the blood and we are clean. And our bodies have been washed with pure water. He's referring here not, not just to baptism, but to repentance. We, when Jesus spoke to Nicodemus in John 3, and he said, you have to be born of what? Of the spirit and of water. You have to go and repent, Nicodemus. You have to think of me different. That's the only condition that allows you to enter into the kingdom of God. You have to start thinking that I'm receiving this today by faith. 
So I want you to be in a position before we have communion. I want you to be in a position of repentance. It's not about, okay, the physical sin, but I am more concerned right now and more pressured, but pressed by the Holy Spirit to pray for our guilty conscience. Yeah. Any guilt, any shame, mm. anything that has stuck by you, even in, in your family, in your I don't know, some people, maybe it's your father, your mother, your mm. sisters, your siblings, your relatives, your church, your, your minister have said ill things about you mm. and you have harbored them, you've nourished them, you've uh, cultivated them and they've taken root in your heart, in your soul. But we need to come and sprinkle them by the blood of Jesus mm. because he has offered us not just that we become born again in our spirit, but transformed in our soul and to be in his image by our actions. Mm. Amen. Mm. So I want you to be in that position right now. Father God, in the, in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, come. Lord, as we repent corporately and those who are watching on YouTube and watching this recording later on, that we come clean, Father, that we come before you right now and say, we are sorry we have missed the mark. We have even thought of you in the wrong way. But tonight, Lord, we ask for your forgiveness. We ask for your atonement. Father, we receive the sprinkling of our guilty consciences by the blood, the living blood of Jesus, because his blood carries eternal life. Father, we come and say, clean Cleanse our consciences, clean our bodies right now, clean our minds right now. And if the Holy Spirit is reminding you of things, can you hear us? And if the Holy Spirit is reminding you of things that you need right now to repent, bring them out in the light. You know, with every sacrifice in the Jewish tradition, the person offering the sacrifice would put their hand on the animal to be sacrificed. And they would confess their sins right now. They would, they would say out loud. Now, I am telling you that it is such a time, an opportune time. Don't worry who's next to you. Don't worry who's beside you right now. Say, Lord, I've missed the mark. I want to start this year that, you know, this year, the, 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 the year that has started just a week ago. And I want to receive your fullness, the fullness of your promises, everything that you have for me. But we cannot deceive God, guys. We cannot deceive him. We cannot. We have to come clean before him. And, and this is why we're having communion right now. If you haven't got your communion ready, please do. We're going to start soon. But I want to pray right now for every broken soul, every brokenness that you have, every shame and guilt. I want you to be free from that. There is no shame in him. There's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who are according, walking according to his spirit. For our consciences have been cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. Right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare your people guilt-free, shame-free. Father, I come in the spiritual realm right now. I stand as an intercessor for those who feel a helpless, hopeless spirit, for those who have carried shame, condemnation, brokenness, falsely for so long i want you to just lay it down say i rebuke suicide thoughts i rebuke hopelessness i rebuke poverty i rebuke lack i rebuke need i rebuke i only need you lord i thank you and let us declare this corporately thank you lord for sprinkling our consciences for declaring that we are free in you. 
that we get to receive our freedom in you. Father, in the name of Jesus right now, every demonic spirit holding, holding your children back right now, I rebuke in the name of Jesus. I declare your children free. You are free. He, I hear the spirit of God saying, I have forgiven your sin eternally. Some of you have to hear that. I have forgiven you. And when I forgive, it's not like your father or your mother or someone that you know to forgive your things. I forgive you eternally. And it's not because of what you have done. It's because of my sacrifice. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we declare freedom. We declare freedom in the bodies. We declare freedom in the mind. We declare freedom right now. Freedom, freedom. We break the enemy's hold over anybody's minds right now. That you are a princess. God says, some of you need to hear this. That you are a princess in his kingdom. That you are royalty. That you have been redeemed totally. And he is proud of you. And God is not anxious. I see this impression in my spirit that he has a smile on his face because of what you have done as accepting his sacrifice. The best, most wonderful decision that you have ever taken. So let's come around our communion right now. Feel the spirit of God. And, And I want you... I want you to hold the bread and hold the cup. And as we have communion together right now, that I would just want to remind you that in his body, he bore our sickness and our iniquities, our diseases. He was lashed. He was bruised. He took even your pain and agony. Some of you needed to hear that. So as we eat the body, the bread right now, we remember that and we want to thank you. We thank you, Father. We thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus. And as we have communion together, we want to remember the greatest atonement ever offered for us. Not just redemption of sin. Not just eternal life. But life now your kingdom life now we appropriate that we take a hold of it right now and so if you're sick in your body i want you as you are eating of the bread right now to say this thank you for your sacrifice i declare that i am healed in the name of jesus let's eat together Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And with this, we come and say, we remember the words of Jesus that you have a new covenant. Take this to remember the new covenant that I have paid for, the covenant of the forgiveness of sins. So we say thank you. Thank you because this reminds us of your eternal sacrifice. Thank you because I am forgiven. Thank you because of the price that you paid for us to say that. And as Nina says, as you're drinking his blood, let this wash every guilty conscience. Let this wash any self-hate. Let this come and just cleanse you as a reminder of what Jesus has done. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your blood. As we take this, as you said, we remember what you have done. We give you glory and we give you praise. Let's take the cup together. I just want you to take this moment to thank him. You know, the early church always remembered the communion as the Thanksgiving meal. It is a Thanksgiving moment. Thank him. Just remember what could have gone wrong last week. And you will start to thank him for hours and hours and hours. I mean, here for us in Florida, we could have been wiped away, right? 
that God protected us from the hurricane. God shielded those. And, and remember the others. Remember those who are broken right now and thank him that he's able to reach out to them. Whether it's your family members, whether it's your loved ones, whether it's your children, whether it, I don't know, but let's take this moment. This is a holy, sacred moment right now as we praise him for what he has done, as we give him thanks for what he has done. The greatest everlasting atonement. I thank you, Father, that you have torn the veil. You tore the veil from, from up down. I thank you that it was your hand that said there is no more barriers. Some of us right now need to hear this. There is no more barriers. The barriers in your mind are being broken right now because of the blood and the sacrifice of Jesus, because of his atonement. I break every thought even being elevated against the truth of the gospel and the truth of his sacrifice right now. And as we come right now and give thanks and our offering of praise and worship and our giving and our offering, I want to bless those who are offering, those who are even saying, you know, I'm reminded right now, and I love this, someone wrote a letter for us. He had a business, he has a business about the 5783. He said, you know what? I am believing for a turnaround for my business this year. And you know, it's a time, the atonement time for the Jewish people was a time to come and rebalance all their books. They rebalance everything. Is it prayer time that I'm not giving the Lord his time? Is it my intimate time with him? Is it my reading time in the Bible? Is it my offerings and my tithe and offerings and, and my service to him? This is what we need to reconsider for the new year. So I want to bless right now. I want to bless you right now because it's not just about the monetary giving, but it's about everything else for the next year. This is everything else. This is God reminding you that I have redeemed, I've made atonement, I've made it right for you, that you only need to come in obedience and humbleness and say, here I am, Lord, I am going to be faithful. So I want to bless those who are giving right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your sacrifice. There is nothing that we can offer in return, but we come with a grateful heart right now. And as we offer what you have entrusted us with, Father, it's a, it's a showing of gratitude, being grateful for what you have done. We are coming into your inner court because you have torn the veil and we are offering what you have entrusted us. So we want to bless you in the name of Jesus. We want to bless all our partners, all our members, all those people who are praying for us, all the people who send us letters of encouragement and support. We want to bless you in the name of Jesus. And you know what? Let me say this again. And I don't want to stop preaching, but as the world gets darker and darker and darker, his light will shine brighter and brighter and brighter over you. And if you believe that, write a man in the chat. We have been so blessed ministering to you. <laughs> Yes, we are so blessed. Please send through your prayer needs. For those that are new, uh, you can do all that on the website, celebratefreedomministries.org. We love prayer needs. We take the time to read them. We take the time to pray for you. So please get in contact with us and let us know what you need. We love you all very, very much. Thank you for praying for us, for standing by us, for believing in us and for allowing us this time to minister to you. We don't take it lightly. So I just want to say happy Yom Kippur and happy great atonement. When you go to bed that night, just say thank you. Thank you for your yes. eternal salvation. We love you, Lord. So we love you all and we cannot wait to see you next Wednesday um, at the same time. Now, we're not always on YouTube, 
today is just a celebration. Yes. But normally, as you know, this is a closed group for our disciples. So those who are watching on YouTube, they want to become a disciple, get on the website and join us. But normally we're not on YouTube. So 